All right. So, I was in uh, King Williamstown earlier because they have uh, copies of Black Panther. Notice, this is like a, it doesn't have any features or anything like that. It's just the, the, the film. I mean, I have it on bootleg because I have this time. No, no, don't get me wrong. I paid. I, uh, we saw we, the opening day here in South Africa. We're down to East London, and I saw it there in the theater. Then I went a few weeks later, I went to uh, Port Elizabeth and saw it, you know, for the 3D. No, no, we saw it 3D, but it's something, something was different. I stayed, I don't know what it was, I just wanted to see it there, in a, or IMAX, or whatever, big, uh, whatever it was, I just went to PE. And then uh, when uh, last year with the um, uh, National Arts Festival, you know, in Grahamstown, they had a showing there, you know, so I sat there in the theater because I wanted to see with other people. So I sat there and saw it then. So, you know, I pay, I paid y'all, I paid y'all. So anyway, don't worry about the bootleg. So then I bought this, this came out. Now the, there's a, uh, a chain of stores called Pick and Pay. Pick and, Pick and Pay, pay. You, know, well, you know, it's a grocery store, but they have these things for 29 Rand. Now this goes for usually like at the least 100 Rand right now, but you know, more than that. Now 29 Rand is according to, it's a little over, a little over $2. So. I picked up a copy because, you know, put it in the, put it with the other stuff, uh, right, right above Coonskin. You all know Coonskin? I know about this one. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm building up a DVD correction from here because stores are closing out using DVD, DVD and I'm going to get that done. Okay, now the thing is, I just want to tell you about Hollywood. You know, people are, are getting all bent out of shape. I don't th think they understand. Look. Uh, talk about this is smoothie here. Mm. Mm. I first started making smoothies seriously uh, when I worked for the Sopranos in the 2000, whatever, 2001. The, the second and the third third seasons of Sopranos, a little bit of, no, second and third seasons of Sopranos, I worked craft service on a film set in, in Queens, you know, with the Silver Cup Studios, whatever. And, and, and also we filmed, of course, in New Jersey. Uh, um, you know, one week we'd be in the studio, and the sets on the studio, and the next week we'd be out on location. Okay. Interestingly enough, with uh, with the Sopranos, you, there's a certain thing on set. Everybody, now I'm, I'm craft service assistant, right? Everybody from craft service assistant up to producer, you have to get along, okay? In fact, my, oh, I shouldn't say this. No, I'm gonna say it, you know, it's, it's, that's a matter. My mom, there's a craft service person. I'm not, I'm not going to mention it. You have to look at the title. So she was there, then me, right? We had two different personalities. For, she, she, man, Debbie was sort of like, I don't know, she's just fierce. She, she, the fierce, she was like, she wasn't likable, but she was great. She knew, she was like, she got stuff that pff, I didn't even know existed in the world. You know what I mean? She knew it. She, she just was kind of, she, she did a lot. She always used the craft service for, uh, for, Woody, uh, for the Woody Allen films. Okay, but anyway, so so I, I was I was her assistant. But it's interesting because I have a whole different thing. I'm the personable that I talk to people. Like this. So at one point in the over Texas, one of the producers we was in the elevator. He said, "Would you uh, do you want to do craft service uh, next year?" I'm going like, "No, no, thank you." Because this is a hard job, and I wasn't going to take Debbie. Hey, what she was doing, she we were good together. Just just put it that way. Okay. Anyway. Um, but the set rules, I mean, it's like you have to get everybody, the, the locations, everybody, the, the, of course, the teamsters, you have to get along. Otherwise, yeah, if you have chaos on the set, it affects everything. And one producer before that, when I was working, um, that fire film, and, anyway, the, when it, before that, when I was working for us, um, uh, what was she called? Mil Demille's, Demille, whatever her name. Anyway, uh, well, producer once told me, you know, because you, you're friendly on the set, I'm, I'm the... I'm craft service, so everybody loves me. I'm making smoothies, I'm making little sandwiches, I'm all kinds of all kinds of things we make, you know, because people, the way it works, you know, you have your regular meals, your, your chef, your chef service, whatever, but then you have to have craft service, because craft service is one that feed, like say a cinematographer, a DP, you know, director of photography. They never leave, you know, you have to bring, you have to bring them stuff, you know what I mean? I used to give people a chewable vitamin C every morning, try to get, and it was a, it was a good thing, you know, PB is a esprit de corps, what you get. So if you have, if you have a set that's in turmoil, you're losing money, because every delay is money. One, one time this guy, producer was telling me, he said, look, make like have a stack of $5 bills. He's doing like this. He said, see what I'm doing? A major production 
This time I'm talking right now. This is how much money we spend for every thing. This is how it, this is how it goes. I said, whoa, that's interesting. This is why they can't. I mean, down here in South Africa, they would. Uh, um, I I just was helping this guy out who, who you know, I would do some extra work. And just, I met Sam Elliott. Hey, he was doing the film down here. You know, checking out Sam Elliott. In fact, there was a woman, uh, uh, African, a uh, 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 colored woman, before, and the way her accent was there, she said something to him. He didn't understand a word she was saying. Speaking English, I understand what she was saying. I I knew what it was. Anyway. I like Sam. Sam was a good person. He was up for the Academy Award. Anyway, uh, he was on this guy who was doing extra. He was on a set, and he's going, he's going to show his, to put him on a machine gun or something like that. And he's going, ah, my God. He started cursing, and, they, and it ruined the take. They have to do the whole thing over because a, an extra or somebody that gave a small responsibility just missed. So that's money. That boy would never be hired again. So I think what happens, what's happening in Hollywood, if people don't understand, there's two things. One, you have to appreciate that when, pizza, when people go into theater, especially acting, whatever have you, a lot of them are really disturbed if they're not right. I mean, when I say not right, they're not normal. Let's put it that way. Hey, goodness, flies away. Now I'm acting like Sydney Green Street in, in uh, Castle Bla Casablanca. You know Casablanca? Wait a second. Oh, time out. Wait a second. Casablanca. Where's my Casablanca? It's around here someplace. Hidden figures, Lucky Logan. Where's Casablanca? It's gotta be here someplace. I have it here someplace. I'm not gonna stop till I find it. I hope I can find it. This is a dark night. Untouchables, uh, uh, Marshalls. Oh, Casablanca. Here we go. Casablanca. Talk about a set. Now they they were they were writing as things were going on. This was back in the day. Casablanca. Oh, it's not the thing. Humphrey Bogart. You know Bogie. You know, Paul Dooley, the, the, the played against the piano, played against Sam. Good movie. Anyway, uh, the, the 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 guy I'm referring to is Sydney Green Street. He was in the in there. He's always well, hitting flies. So we're like, oh, damn. Anyway, Castle Franco. Oh, back to the point. I'm sorry, I stray all the time. This is the way actors are and stuff like that. And I used to, you know, I'm a theater. I'm, I do theater. You know, theater. I've been in theater a long time. And I'm telling you, the 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 major thing in theater is that, especially as a director or stage manager, especially stage manager, you have to really, you gotta, you know, change people's, it's a psychological thing. If you, a director, there's a lot of things, but one of the things is a psychological thing. You know, because you have to know everybody what their needs are. Anyway, the point is, so a lot of these people, when they go to, um, uh, when they go to, um, Hollywood, it's a whole other thing. And you, you, it's a, every, everything's a hookup. You know, so if 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 you have a whole uh, a whole uh, uh, cabal of, of of whatever their sexual proclivities are, then the people who have those sex, same sexual pro proclivities will go to that 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 cabal, that, that you know that, that that grouping. You know what I mean? So now, if this one grouping is taken over, and then and the decision makers, the, I guess they call them gatekeepers or whatever they whatever you call them. If they're if they're not you know if they're not don't look like you then they're going to shun you they're going to have people of their own that's what happens so a lot of these things that's happened with these these guys uh, uh, doing stuff they say well, why don't you do this here put this dress on stuff like that and the person might say unless they have real real business ah, I don't care I'm an actor I can play any role they do whatever it is you know that's just the way it is so if we keep on just trying to jump on actors or this guy is wearing a dress or whatever it is well that's what he does. That, I mean, that's, he's an actor. He's a, he needs notoriety. He needs to be, be blown up so people notice him, and then they'll hire him. And da 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 da. People take different things, you know, different different routes. So you can't, you can fault them. And and, and but I understand. The, the problem is these are, these are the people that are projected and the images everything. So if you if you if if you only see, it's it's like it's like in a so-called ghetto. What happens if you only see gangsters, you know what I mean? If you only see whatever, then you gonna wanna grow up to be like that, you see? Now if you bunch bunch of bunch of doctors and lawyers and whatever, you're gonna be like that. If you you're just gonna be like that. So it's it's sort of weirdly simple. Our problem is that we take this thing seriously. We think and then when those when those people start talking, defending their whatever they're doing, then it's almost like they, they it's like they're speaking for us. No, so there's a really huge backlash about that. I just think if you're an actor, whatever, I mean, why are you following a musician? Same thing. They, don't get me wrong. They are. That's not your only job, but there's other things that that, that, that you know. If you're, I mean, I'm, let me try to uh, think think of somebody that's really really kind. I mean, like I was listening to something with uh, Isaiah Washington and and Judge Joe Brown. If I have the, I'll try to get the link. And he was playing some really interesting stuff. So. 
I don't want to see be patient. I mean, we have to do what we have to do to change the image and da 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 da, whatever it is. But you know, it's it's hard. To, it's it's hard because you know people are individualists. They, they, and, and and if you don't, if nobody has your back, no organization has your back, you know, then you 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 you'll be in real trouble. I mean. Um, so the Khan Karmak, the secretary, was saying that, uh, under, you know, I'm a denizen of, of um, a nearly full of He said, don't have no organization, individual. But no, we need to have small groupings, small groupings. One of the small groupings that I particularly like, I noticed, uh, you know, the boxer, uh, uh, Anthony Joshua, sorry, yeah, Anthony Joshua, he has a crew around him. Um, uh, the Beast, uh, uh, um, the Beast, in Beast mode, you know what I mean? Uh, football player, you know what I'm talking about, out of Oakland, you know. Damn, why can't, why can't I remember? They, they wouldn't give him the ball, you know what I mean? You could have been, they could have won the Super Bowl, but they, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. They wanted Marshawn Lynch, okay? He has a crew that they've known from, from childhood. So uh, if you surround yourself with people you know and you can do stuff, even Kevin Hart has a crew, you know what I mean? Then what happens, it's better for you. And if you have the money to swear with all the do, you should get, you should have a little crew of people you trust. Otherwise, you'll be infiltrated. Like, you know, they're trying to make a movie of Fred Hampton. Infiltration. Every, all the Panthers, all these, they're infiltrated. So you have to have a small enough group that you know everybody, but you can still interact with a larger group. You see? So here, you know, at, uh, at, the, uh, uh, at this particular desk of, of the ADOS, I'm just myself. I'm in Africa. I don't have any uh, ADOS around me. I'm the only. I'm the only ADOS in the, in the entire area. I don't even. I ain't met nobody. You know. In fact, if you come to Alice, just say, "Hey, where's the Black American at?" Because like, right there. They bring you right, right to where I am. Okay. So all I'm trying to say is um, not to be patient. We have to do what we have to do. But I think we have to do it in these smaller groupings. Uh, and I think it's happening. That's the way it's happening. People are intrinsically understanding and, and learning, you know, just feeling what it is. So that's why I respect uh, what, what we're doing. I really hope. I mean, no, I don't hope. I know what's going to happen. I've been through, I've seen this. this when I say this, not to, but certain movements. I've, I've been involved in a bunch of things. I see how, it's, how it develops, and it's really uh, quite, quite, quite interesting. One last thing, because uh, I'm, a, I'm a radio man, you know, that's just theater, but radio man. And when I had my radio program, I first got in radio in, in the early 70s. I was, I was poet in residence for this, for WPRB, this Princeton uh, radio station, uh, where JB was the uh, uh, Saturday Soul with JB. Now, you know what we did? This is the first time. This is the early 70s. We had a six and a half hour program. It, was, it had never been done before, and it hasn't been done since. A six and a half hour radio program on a Saturday it was an incredible program. Saturday, so hey, you know, if you understood, you understood. But then when I went to um, when I went to uh, Livingston College, a part of Rutgers University, uh, they, we had our we had a, a carrier current station, a radio station on campus. But then off or on at Rutgers uh, main campus, because Livingston campus was over in Piscataway, the main campus in New Brunswick, uh, they had the broadcast station, uh, the uh, RWRSU. And then when I, since I was a communications major, and when our first introductory class, or something, um, anyway, this guy came over, one of the guys came over, decent guy, came over from the station and said, well, you know, we're, we always have, uh, looking for talent, blah, whatever it is. They said, but you have to take this test. But at that time, you had to take the FCC, you had to have a third class license or something like that. So yeah, this was a very really tough test, and a regional test. So you had to go, I had to go from New Brunswick up to New York to do it. And uh, I wasn't paying any attention. I said, oh, test, big deal, you know, no radio. So I went there, it was made, uh, there's a lot of math in the test. I had developed something where I can, because uh, I'm an English major, uh, or in communications in English, double major, but I somehow I figured out how to replace math talk with English. So I understood it really easy. So we're taking it, you know, I'm going there to take the test, and they said, not a lot of people, they were telling me, not a lot of people pass this. And so I had, had this habit where I would take, if I take it, this one of those ones, if I take it, then because it's, it's filling in the dot things, I, I said, oh, I'm finished. Leave time. I go back and look over the test. I said, well, I didn't want to put that one. I changed it like that. So because I finished earlier and the lines were short, but when I finished, the line was longer. You know, so I get this like six, seven lines, eight lines going down. And they have these, so they would say, oh, da, da. Then, then like uh, the guy, like the, there was not, not before me, but one before, right before me. I mean, a lot of people have gone through this. The guy says to him, congratulations, you're the first person to pass the test today. Then all of a sudden, I'm going like, what? Lordy B. <laughs> Lordy B. I guess I'm a little, I guess maybe they're right. So it comes up to me. Remember, lots of people is going through. 
something else happened. Then I think I'm going to make this up. But, but, anyway. but the guy says, congratulations, you're the third person to pass the test today. So I got my little license. I went back to school, and they had to give me a radio program on the on on main campus, a broadcast station. Here's the thing. I didn't, I didn't say this, but they, these were arrogant white boys. Forget white, white, there's not, white privileged white boys. Rutgers, this is Ivy League, you know, minor Ivy League college, Rutgers University. You know, and we're over from limit, that doesn't matter. So what I did, and because they had promises, they had to give me a program. So the guy gave up his educator program for me, and I called the name of the program was uh, Variations in Blackness. But what I did when I came in, you know, to, to you know, the first, for the, for the program, I took my, my roommate, uh, was there another cat, big, you know, black cat, but, you know, when I said, and, and Sinani Bryant, uh, 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 peace and blessings on, his, on her eternal soul. I didn't know she had passed, but anyway. Um, Sinani, these, she's, she's my buddy, my confidant, you know what I mean? You know, we weren't doing any, we weren't boinking or anything like that. We just, I always had friends, you know what I mean? So I, so I had these, so basically, they went, they thought well, they was getting one black person. Four of us walked in. And I created things since we were suit, I created it, so that one week somebody would be the engineer, somebody else would be the producer, somebody else would be the host, right? And then one person would have off, because we're students, and one person would have off that week. So that's where we, everybody would always come, but that way you wouldn't have responsibility, those kind of responsibilities, I did like that. Anyway, so since I had the lights, I had to be the, whatever. So, so I trained them all how to do everything, how to engineer, da, 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 da. that's how I met, um, uh, Loretta Duma, because uh, 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 Chuck, you know, one the big the guy, uh, he ran into Loretta, and then they talked about Henry Duma, and and so she came up for an interview, and then also oh, wow, you know, so reading his books and that. Okay, uh, so anyway, so, so I'm trying to say is, so I walked in with a group of people, and it, it freaked them out, you know what I mean? In fact, there was this black, dark-skinned black girl. I think she was actually Sinani's cousin, right? Was when we walked in, she was up there hugging on a white boy, kissing on him. And from then on, she, she, I think her name was Cheryl, she like was, she was like, she was mad because she got busted, but she hated us. Literally hated her cousin and our, our whole crew. Woo. I eventually became, uh, eventually I became something like, a, I was in charge of black programming, something like that. Anyway, so I'm, I'm trying to say, we, if you run in small crews and everybody knows it's hard to be infiltrated, how people turn, because you, you know their needs or whatever have you. And that's one of the things I, I, I like about what's happening these days, that the whole landscape, what's, what's happening with, our, with movements. <sighs> oh, I got all that out. Okay, okay, so what I was going to say there? Okay, so even something, oh, I also wonder, everybody's talking about this Lady Gaga, uh, Bradley Cooper thing. So they look like they were, like they, they must be an item. They're acting. The boy's a director. In fact, when I looked, I already looked at the thing. They didn't do it. They looked, looked at the eyes. They looked sing in somebody's eyes. It's fine. And only they was put their heads together like that. That was the most intimate thing as far as touching goes. But I guess that, you know, that, that energy or whatever have you, it felt like sexual energy or whatever have you. But it wasn't. But you can tell they were acting. What's going on? What's, what are you worried about? You know what I mean? Okay, so that's it. Oh, one last thing. Trevor Noah was so funny when he was introducing Black Panther as a, as a movie because he said so basically he was saying uh, those white people ain't gonna know what, he, what I'm talking about blah 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 and he just said something closer right so it's very very funny. Uh, you know, people who know closer they all would get cracking up when there's all the white people clapping yay it was it's a joke okay so that's it the, uh, for me T from the Patterson taking the train to the from you know I'm speaking to you from uh, a desk of the DOS letting you know what I only suspect Actually, what I know because it's theater and, uh, and film or whatever.